Some order really uh, came into play about 1906 when the Library of Congress made a concerted effort to buy and beg and gather what presidential papers they could for their manuscript division. And they were successful in obtaining a sizable portion of the papers of 22 of the men who served as President of the United States. And so into the 1920s, the plan was still that the Library of Congress would take the papers of the President. Well, when uh, Warren Harding died in office, his widow uh, refused the offer and took the papers back to, uh, to Ohio. Calvin Coolidge did the same. He decided not to, to turn to the Library of Congress. Herbert Hoover, in turn, decided to take his papers back to his alma mater at Stanford University. Well, the Librarian of Congress kept trying. He wasn't going to give up, and he asked Franklin Roosevelt for his papers. And Roosevelt was inclined to support the Library of Congress. He visited the building, gave the matter much thought, wasn't sure what he was going to do, and then made a completely different decision. It, late in the 1930s, because at that point Franklin Roosevelt thought he was going to serve only two terms, he made a decision to build, at his own expense, a building he called a library on the grounds of his birthplace in Hyde Park, New York. And he was going to open that library to the public, but he was also going to do research there. He enjoyed going to Hyde Park. He relaxed there. Uh, and so beginning in the late 1930s, he started constructing this private library and also made a decision that was ratified by Congress to give the library and his papers to the federal government, to the people of the United States, and it would be run by the agency that he had established, the National Archives. So that is the first presidential library. Although Hoover is the first chronologically in our system, it is Franklin Roosevelt who built the first presidential library, which was opened up in June of 1941.